You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. In this first segment of our program today, we'll be discussing some of the mystical practices that are being promoted within evangelical Christianity and that are attracting many of our young people. These are prevalent among fellowships that call themselves emerging churches, a movement which we're very concerned about and which has been an ongoing topic of ours for a number of weeks. The interest in mystical practices among evangelicals has certainly gotten a recent boost from the emerging church movement, but the contemporary groundwork was started uh, well, we could point to many, many uh, situations, Dave, but as one you'll know, uh, really comes out of uh, Campus Crusade. Uh, there were some leaders, this is back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, leaders of Campus Crusade, Jack Sparks, John Braun, Pete Gilquest, and they left really evangelical Christianity and started their own church, which was called the Evangelical Orthodox Church, and they became priests. And also, we could mention Richard Foster and his organization, Renovari. Uh, they've had much to do to attract evangelicals to mystical practices. So, Dave, what do we want to talk about today? Uh, because these things are out there. Uh, they're supported by, you know, names, recognized names within evangelical Christianity. But we want to talk about what mystical practices are. Well, in some cases, they're attempts to enrich one's spirituality through various techniques and methods. Mysticism is described as the ways and means of gaining contact or communion with the ultimate reality or God. And the goal, the ultimate goal of mysticism among those who profess to be Christians is union with God. Now, Dave, I mentioned Gilquest and Foster, and but there have been some other professing evangelicals who's gotten involved in mysticism. I mean, we could go back farther than these guys, uh, Jesse Penn Lewis, Norman Grubb, others. Um, what's, what's your understanding of this, either within Christianity or without mysticism? Is there mysticism in the Bible? Mysticism, as you defined it, uh, involves techniques for finding union with God, for getting in touch with God, for making contact uh, with God. This is not taught in the Bible. In fact, it's called divination. Mm -hmm. uh, we've discussed it before. If you went to Jeremiah 42, for example, when the, um, well, the Israelis who have not been taken to Babylon yet, and they're debating on whether to go to Egypt. They, will, they don't want to be there when Nebuchadnezzar and his gang come back again. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, they say, well, we really want to do God's will. So they come to Jeremiah, and they say, go to your God, that's interesting, and ask him what he wants us to do, and we will do it. They have no intention. It's like Balaam. You know, he doesn't get the right answer from God, and so he says, well, let me go back and I'll talk to him again, see what else he might say. Mm -hmm. uh, so these people are wanting to get the answer that they want. But anyway, what does Jeremiah do? <clears throat> he doesn't do like Edgar Casey. He doesn't you know, go into a trance. He doesn't put his hand over the third eye. Third eye mm -hmm. in the center of his forehead. He doesn't engage in visualization or any burning candles or any mystical practices. He doesn't consult uh, some great oracle or whatever it is. Or tea leaves. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's all kinds of ways. Uh, crystal ball, Ouija board, and so forth. These are all parts of the occult, but they are part of mysticism. He just says, I will ask God what, he's, what he wants, and I will wait and see. And I think it says 
uh, after 10 days, if I'm not mistaken, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Mm -hmm. Jeremiah had no technique. God spoke to him, and he didn't do it immediately. There was no way that he could get God to talk to him immediately. And the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah says. And you find that expression more than 50 times in Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy or whatever. So we have no objection if God, well, of course, of course, we have the word of God now. But we have no objection if God wants to speak to you. He does speak to us in our hearts. He speaks to us through his word. But uh, we don't search for a technique to get a message from God. Right, which is contrary to his word. Absolutely. That's how we know. So that's, um, mm-hmm. that would be the heart of mysticism. Mm-hmm. Dave, last week we discussed the growing interest among evangelicals in using icons to deepen one's spiritual relationship, or at least that was the idea. And icons, for those who don't know, they could you know, check uh, our last program, last week's program, which we have archived. Uh, but icons are usually paintings of images of Christ, Mary, or other biblical characters. And the whole idea is that you meditate, you, you meditate upon this image, and supposedly, it's going to open the gates of heaven, as they would say, and thereby a person gains entrance into the spiritual realm, uh, which is what they, they were told. Uh, but there are many other techniques, and that's what I'd like to, to go over, Dave, because whether it be through the emerging church or through the other individuals, Richard Foster, the other individuals that we've mentioned, there is a growing interest in mysticism among evangelicals. Uh, I've got a book right here, which was given to me by the author. Uh, His name is Tony Jones. The book is titled The Sacred Way, and the subtitle, Spiritual Practices for Everyday Life. And this is just one example. There are many other books. We mentioned uh, how influential the Catholic mystic Henry Nguyen, priest, Henry Nguyen, who's now deceased, but what a... uh, amazing influence he has had among uh, conservative so-called evangelicals. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I met uh, uh, Tony Jones when he came to Bend, Oregon. This was back in back in August. And uh, I was stunned to hear him say that there were here in Bend, which is not a large community, there were more than uh, or there were about a dozen emerging churches right here in our town. And six of them were independent fellowships, and the other six were connected with, with larger churches. Well, what about the, uh, the sacred way? Well, in it, he defines uh, spiritual practices that most of the emerging churches are, are dabbling in and, and many are committed to. So, you know, as we've said in past programs, uh, if somebody's involved in an emerging church, uh, they may not be into all the things that we're talking about. But I would say the great per- greater percentage are definitely into mysticism. Now, you know, you know Tom, uh, the more I read the Bible, the more I understand it, the more amazed I am. Of course, this is God's Word. Right. And you can just finish that book with one verse, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Mm -hmm. Okay? So where does that figure in here? Jesus said nothing about techniques. Uh, In fact, in his prayer, the true Lord's Prayer, John 17, he said, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. Now, how are we going to know him? Not through icons, not through candles, not through mystical practices, but through his word. And For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 